We just got back from our first ever Holland America line cruise, and let me tell you, it was not what we expected. Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Jordan. And I'm Jared. And this is JJ, JJ Cruz. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. We are talking all things Holland America. We spent seven nights aboard the new Staten Dam cruise ship. It's one of their newer cruise ships, a part of the Pinnacle class. And we came back with a plethora of information. We know that there is so much said about Holland America Line as a cruise line. And we want to be able to tell you our actual honest thoughts on what our experience was, whether it be good, bad, or maybe even ugly. So stay tuned to the end. We're gonna tell you all there is, whether it's about the food on board the ship, the people on board, the overall vibe. Was it snobby? Was it snooty? Was there a problem while we were on the ship that we could have seen coming from a mile away? We'll let you know all of it by the end of this video and let you know if we will ever sail this cruise line again. Before we get into all of that, we do want to ask you to subscribe to the channel. We are close to our goal of 40,000 subscribers. We definitely would love all of you at home to be a part of the first 40K JJ crew. And while you're hitting that red subscribe button, please also don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Let's talk about the people that actually sail on Holland America. Because like Jared said, there were some preconceived notions about the clientele or the type of people that would be on board. Before we went on board, we did know that the average age of the Holland America Line Cruiser is 67 years old. Once we got on board, we found out that the sailing that we were on was actually a decade younger, and the average age on board for the week in March that we sailed was 57. Now, this was probably because it was spring break, but we were shocked to see quite a few young people on board. Not only was there people in their 30s, like us, on the ship, but there was a wide range of diversity in age, from little kids all the way up to those in their 80s and 90s. What we've learned from this is that it does depend on when you cruise. If kids are out of school, if it's a shorter journey, and if it's on a newer ship, you might have very similar demographics to what we had on board, but if you're gonna do a longer itinerary of a cruise, maybe an older cruise ship, and kids are in school, well, it might be an older cruise demographic, but that's pretty typical across all cruise lines and the premium cruise space. Along with demographics of people is the vibe on board. The number one thing we expected and heard from people is it was a more snooty of an audience, a little bit more standoffish, and people didn't really want to be bothered. We kind of found this to be the opposite while on board and the fact of it was one of the most lively ships we've been on. There was dancing in every single music venue on the ship at all hours that musicians were playing. We had expected it to be much different than that where people are in their corners kind of really not wanting there to be much but some classical music playing and it was completely different than what we expected. Something else that was totally different than our expectations was the overall dress code. Now, Jared and I both packed suits because we expected a very formal experience, and we were shocked to see that overall, people were dressed more casual, but in a smart, casual, or chic way. This falls directly in line with some of Holland America's competitors, and we never once felt like we were out of place being in our 30s, wearing, you know, really nice dark denim jeans and a collared shirt to dinner. This was just surprising in general because it's something that you hear consistently that these cruise lines are super formal and you better have your tuxedo packed, otherwise you're not gonna fit in. When it came to our expectations of the overall ship herself, we had some, well, thoughts. We thought it might be like an old school yacht, but not in a good way, more of like grandma's house, but on a cruise ship. <laughs> And we were pleasantly surprised that it wasn't. Now, keep in mind, the cruise ships in Holland America Line's fleet are actually smaller than most mainstream cruise lines. In fact, all of the ships are under 100,000 gross tons. That's hard to come by for a lot of your mainstream cruise lines today that is sailing and what you probably have been on already. But when we came on board, it was flawless in design. 
beautiful contemporary design, clean lines, and one thing I have to mention is it felt very high end, lots of wood, and just a lot of feeling of you're on an actual premium or luxury cruise ship. Because the cruise ship was smaller in size, it was really easy to get around. Almost all of your venues, eateries, coffee shops, entertainment uh, music spaces were found on decks two and three. Then the upper decks were of course the pool decks. Now in general we really did love the ship. The one issue that we had was up on the pool decks there wasn't a designated space for adults. We heard that the pool more towards the back of the ship was supposed to be an adults only pool but we were sailing during spring break and that pool was full of children the entire time. We get it, it was spring break, that is not a problem for either of us, but we do love those adults only areas that you can kind of get away and just relax while at sea. The modern contemporary feel though did not only exist in the public spaces on the ship, it also carried into the staterooms. Our stateroom was well designed and thoughtfully designed. It was a little on the small side, but in general, we felt like it was one of the more modern staterooms we've ever stayed in. It had outlets throughout the stateroom, which is hard to come by, to be honest, even with the newer ships. This was really good for us because we are someone that likes to, well, you know, plug and play. <laughs> It was just a good thing that the stateroom is that well modernized with that many outlets and plugs, both USB, European, and US. When it comes to the overall food and beverages on board, there's a lot to digest here. No <laughs> pun intended. Let's start off with the food side. The dining service at night is some of the best memories we have from being on board this ship. They have a fresh fish program at sea, which is one of a kind. It's not on other cruise lines where they guarantee your fish is gonna be fresh. We could tell that difference. I love fish and it was some of the best fish I've ever had at sea. And that goes along the lines of the rest of the dinner service all throughout the ship. It includes specialty restaurants. All the time at dinner, we could always expect to have a good meal. In terms of specialty restaurants, another thing that was a pleasant surprise was the cost of specialty restaurant dining. When you go to specialty restaurants on most cruise ships, you expect to pay between 60 and $70 per person for dinner. On Holland America, the prices for specialty dining started as low as $19 a person. The steakhouse, which was one of the best steakhouses we've ever eaten at at sea, was only $39 per person. So this was something that was a great surprise for us and we thoroughly enjoyed the specialty dining restaurants on the ship. There is something that wasn't great for us in regards to food and that was fast casual. The pizza and burgers in specific are, well, not our favorite. We have had a lot of fast casual food on a lot of different cruise lines and this was probably some of the worst for casual food that we've had. However, that to be said, the overall dining in the main dining room was so great that if you just plan it out to have all your meals in the main dining room, you will be good to go. It is really just that bar type of food like burgers and pizza, nachos and those kinds of things that just weren't hitting the mark for us. One other thing that we found to be just a little bit of a disappointment was the bar menus. So we visited multiple different bars and tasted different drinks while we were on board. And in general, most of their drinks are your more common drinks that you would find, like Long Islands or gin and tonics with just different names. In comparison to some of Holland's competitors, there was no real craft cocktail bars or high-end cocktails with really interesting ingredients while we were on the new Staten Dam. That being said, they still had great drinks across the ship. But if you're looking for the craft cocktail experience, you're not going to find that on Holland America's new Staten Dam. Did want to just add into there that if you do get a chance to do a mixology class, we highly recommend it. Ours were as cheap as $15 a person, came with four drinks, and you kind of learned how to make those drinks. And those were actually the most craft cocktail it got. So if you do have that experience, definitely go ahead and sign up early and arrive early so you get a seat for mixology class. When it comes to entertainment and activities, we were really excited to get on board and listen to some of the live music. If you know anything about Holland America, they are known for putting a focus on live music and there is 
this part of the ship called the music walk. We heard a lot before we got on board about this music walk, which is in regards to the entertainment on board. So we were really excited to start actually experiencing this famous music walk. The music walk consisted of multiple music venues, including B.B. King's Jazz Club, the Rolling Stone Rock Room, and Billboard On Board, which was a dueling piano venue. We did get to experience music in each of these venues, and we thought it was amazing. If you like jazz, rock and roll, or really any type of music, you're going to find that while on board Holland America. And take it from us, you're going to enjoy it. And when they say music walk, you will be walking and dancing all the way from venue to venue. One set ends, another set begins. It's just such a cool experience to go from jazz all the way over to rock and then talk about the top 40 hits that are in today's society sung by, you know, dueling pianists. When it comes to the other entertainment that was on board, I think a lot of people wonder if the rest of the entertainment is just classical music. From our experience, there was quite a bit of classical music, especially in the afternoons. The B.B. King Jazz Club becomes Lincoln Center during the day, and there normally is a string quartet that lives in that space there, as well as multiple classical concerts in the main theater at night. We did see a comedian and a couple of other smaller things, but there is no large theatrical show in the theater that you can expect to see when coming on board the ship. When it comes to activities, we really didn't expect there to be many. We felt that it was going to be more slow paced, not a lot to do during the day. And we were really pleasantly surprised that there was a lot on the daily schedule. Things like trivia, game shows, uh, just the typical things you would find on most cruise lines was still there with Holland America Line. So if you are worried about that at all, you should not be worried at all. While on our cruise, we did make four different stops in the Caribbean, and we did get to experience a couple of excursions. We took a wonderful tour in Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic, and lounged at a private beach in Turks and Caicos. We felt like the excursions were all reasonably priced. Most excursions were between $60 and $100 per person, which is fairly typical, but maybe even a little bit less than your other mainstream cruise lines out there. I really love the fact that both excursions we booked had lunch included too. So with the good rate, the diverse amount of types of excursions out there, we really were pleasantly surprised what Holland America Line had to offer. Let's talk about service on the ship. I think good service is expected when going on most cruise lines, but a premium cruise line like Holland America, we definitely expected the service to be good. And for the most part, we found it to be great. At dinner, our dinner service was excellent. They would get us in and out in under 45 minutes. Our room stewards kept our rooms nice and clean and crisp. We found people to be friendly and guest services to be really helpful. There was a couple of areas though that service did falter for us in our experience. The first incident or incidents was regarding our stateroom phone. We had ordered room service a few times throughout the cruise and unfortunately, you have to call in to get this room service, but the whole times to even talk to someone were so long. The worst part about it is that the phone would drop once the person picked up sometimes. And so one time I had to call guest services, they were happy enough to connect me directly to the room service attendant and they were able to handle my order. But this was something that was really out there and something we haven't experienced on a premium cruise line before to have that long of a hold time for just room service. And this was normal times during the day. One other thing that was a little bit strange for us is the bar service did lack a little bit. We would go up to a bar and order a drink and we would always be the last people at the bar served. This doesn't mean that we would walk up, you know, around people and we'd be the last people served. We would stand there while person after person would come up on either side of us and the bartender would be like, what do you want? Before taking our order. This is not something that is a huge problem for us. It did not bother us. It was just bizarre. I don't know if they were serving people in order of age or what the thought was behind it, uh, but it was consistent and it did happen at multiple bars throughout the week. We obviously get on these ships and we work throughout the week, so strong Wi-Fi is very, very important to us. In general, the Wi-Fi was very slow. They do not have Starlink on the ship that we were on quite yet. I think they are getting it in the future, but it was something that if you're working from the ship, just to know that on the new Staten Dam, the Wi-Fi speeds were very slow. So who is Hall and America Line actually for? 
we have to say that we think it's a wider demographic than we thought it was previously before coming on our first cruise. We would have said that Holland America Line is definitely for an older demographic, but we now believe that, like Jared said, it's for a more diverse demographic. I really think it comes down to a couple of key things. Holland America is for people that appreciate good food and great music. On top of that, if you were someone that loves to dance, this may be one of the best cruise lines for you. I personally don't think I've ever seen a cruise ship of this size have more people dancing at one time at every music venue than this ship. <laughs> this ship had it all for dancing and it was from blues to classical to rock to modern hits. It was everything and it was really cool to see. Overall, we were really, really impressed and kind of our minds were blown because we came on with a set of expectations and the experience was vastly different than what we actually encountered. So who is it not for? I think there's three areas that we have to talk about. The first is if you're looking for a party ship, this is not gonna be the cruise line for you. If you want to drink a lot, there is a limit of 15 drinks on board. Not saying you need more than that, but that is something that some people strive to reach. You should not go on Holland America if you're striving to reach 15 drinks. The second thing is entertainment. If you are someone that has to have those Broadway-esque shows, Holland America Line is not for you. If that's the main reason you're going, Remember, the music is fantastic, but if you're going for those huge shows, they're not on board. Lastly, if you are someone that loves more of that fast, casual, bar food type eats, this might not be the best cruise for you. That said, if you love the finer things in life, it might be just for you. So to answer the question, would we cruise Holland America Line again? The answer is, of course, yes, we would. <laughs> we had a really wonderful week on board. We do have to say thank you to Holland America. They did invite us on board for the week, and we really appreciated being on board and learning everything there was to learn about Holland America, and you can bet for sure that we will be back on board again. That was our honest review of Holland America Line as a cruise line, as well as the new Staten Dam cruise ship. What were your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below if you've ever been on Holland America Line or if you've never been and you've learned something new and want to share your thoughts, let them know in the comments below. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, see ya. See ya.